Mr. Speaker, I move for the consideration on second reading of Committee Report 758 on House Bill 6475. And could the Secretary General be directed to read the title of said measure? So moved, Mr. Speaker. The Secretary General is hereby directed to read the title of House Bill 6475 under Committee Report 758 for consideration on second reading. House Bill number 6475. An act providing for the basic law for the Bangsamora and abolishing the autonomous region in Muslim Mindanao, repealing for the purpose of Public Act number 9054, entitled an act to strengthen and expand the Organic Act for the Autonomous Region in Muslim Mindanao, and Republic Act number 6734, entitled an act providing for an Organic Act for the Autonomous Region in Muslim Mindanao and for other purposes. Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, next to deliver her sponsorship speech is the Chairperson of the Special Committee on Peace, Reconciliation and Unity, the Honorable Ruby M. Sahali of the Lone District of Tawi Tawi. I move that she be recognized. Representative Ruby Sahali from the Lone District of Tawi Tawi is recognized to sponsor House Bill 6475. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuhu. Mr. Speaker, Majority Floor Leader, Distinguished Colleagues, Assalamu alaikum. I rise before you today as Chairman of the Special Committee on Peace, Reconciliation and Unity, as a Bangsamora woman, as a representative of the people of Tawi Tawi, to sponsor the passage of House Bill Number 6475, Committee Report 758, otherwise known as the Bangsamora Basic Law. The last six months have been tedious but an overwhelming teaching and learning experience, not only for me personally, but for all of us members of the joint committees, including our legislative staff, the secretariat, and everyone else who have been working hard to reach this point. Despite our busy schedules in our respective districts and legislative work, we have journeyed far and wide during the public consultations to be with the people on the ground to listen to their aspirations and sentiments, to answer questions and address their fear, we owe it to the people, Mr. Speaker. It is both a teaching and a learning journey because as we teach ourselves and each other on how to refine the Bangsamoro Basic Law Bill, we learn to be patient and respectful of each other's opinions and sentiments. We have deepened our analysis of the laws to guide us so we can act a law that is more inclusive and people-oriented, a law that is truly from the people and for the people we serve and lead. Personally, Mr. Speaker, it has been an emotional journey because I have learned so much of our history and culture as a Bangsamora people. Traveling to mainland Mindanao, for the public consultations had given me a different perspective on the cry for self-determination. It is not just but about political self-governance and independence, but of being able to determine for ourselves a future that is our own without external compulsions, a future for our children to benefit from. Our unique history and aspirations are a key the opening doors of opportunities that is uniquely Bangsamoro. There was a point along the way that I almost cried in an outburst of emotions, not only knowing what to do or say to the people of Tawi Tawi, who might lose employment with jobs that fed families and their children, send their children to school under the current ARMM setup. There are 41,184 positions in ARMM and 34,472 of which are from the Department of Education. Teaching and non-teaching personnel, fear can be overwhelming too. Change can give us that kind of feeling. The idea of the unknown that can give us the frightening chills, the kind that can make us want to give up the fight and just to be comfortable with what we already have. Magsandal na sa jack kita, bang uno na yung kato. Magtiis na lang tayo kung anong meron sa atin. Forgetting that our forefathers before us fought hard for a dream, the, dream, the kind that makes us hopeful 
today. We felt that the people's pulse, Mr. Speaker, both the Bang Samoro and the non-Bang Samoro, they all want peace. They all want conflict in Mindanao resolved. And they all want Congress to pass this law the soonest. Mr. Speaker, I am convinced that resolving these issues is just a matter of will. The overriding consideration is the desire for a political settlement in a region that has been in pain and suffering for so long already. We as legislators cannot allow the peace process to default back into uncertainty and chaos merely because of technicalities. Mr. Speaker, my dear colleagues, I am truly grateful to be a part of this toilsome but priceless journey. I am thankful to be a part of this groundbreaking realization of attaining peace in Mindanao. I am confident that when history will come to judge us for what we are doing now, we will be long remembered for taking a valiant stand to fight for the legacy of our forebears and the future of our children. Now we are at the crossroads of our legislative journey. As the proposal bill is now in the hands of Congress, before you make your final stance, let me appeal to you to remember the historical injustices that the Bang Samoro people have endured throughout the century. Injustices which have subjugated our religion and our culture. Injustices which have stunted our economic and social growth. Injustices which have caused countless innocent lives. Injustices which have obviously fueled the rise of a new breed of radicalism. My dear colleagues, a vote for the Bang Samora Bill is not only a vote for the Bang Samora people, it is a vote for the entire, entire nation, a vote for the Filipino people, regardless of religion, culture, and political persuasion. In passing this bill, it will be an affirmative action to correct centuries of neglect and injustices on our people in Mindanao. The success of the Bang Samoro is the success of the Filipino people because we, the Bang Samoro people, are indispensable part of our national identity. Those who say that the bill caters to regionalism and favors only a small segment of the Filipino society have a myopic view of our common heritage. Cultural distinction has been the hallmark of our national identity since time immemorial. It is time to nurture this asset and make it work to achieve our common goal for a national unity as well as genuine peace and development. This is the kind of legacy that we would want to be bequeathed our children, Mr. Speaker, and our dear colleagues so that our nation will continue to endure until the end of time. Magkaisa po tayo sa kapayapaan. Onward now to peace, reconciliation, and unity. Wabilahil tofik walidaya. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi ta'ala. Wabarakatuh. Thank you very much, Chairperson of Committee on Peace, Reconciliation, and Unity. Majority Leader.